First impression. It's good? Cool. Really cool. Good morning, comrades. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Nürburgring. Welcome back at Apex. And today, I'm slightly more excited that you're usually used of me because we just picked up our brand new Toyota Yaris GR. And I was thinking, let's do pickup vlog, etc. But then I decided, you know what? Let's jump straight to the point. So we're going to do a walk around the car, going to show you my favorite features, what made me already excited after driving it for the first 200 kilometers. We're going to put it on the lift with George. So go more into details regarding the suspension the brakes that the car is running, bring it to Blackfish Graphics to put new decals on and tomorrow we're going to take it out on the track because simply today the track is closed. And speaking of taking it out on the track, the reason why we bought this car in the first place is because it is our latest member of Apex rental fleet. This means that you can rent this car out to drive Nürburgring Nordschleife starting from 275 euros for two laps all inclusive. This means lap ticket, which usually costs by itself already 30 euros, so 60 euros for that goes to lap ticket. It's fuel on the first lap, you're gonna have instructor with you. So it is actually significant, a little amount of money that you are paying for this car. But the reason why I'm mentioning this is because usually at the end of the year, we run all kinds of promotional deals, minus 15% vouchers that you can spend towards the next season, next year that you can get Christmas voucher. Unfortunately, this car will be excluded from all the promo deals as of now, but there's a very good reason for that. Although this car is already mind-blowing, we are still going to do lots of modifications to it. So suspension, brakes, tires, cage, seats, you name it, you know the usual recipe. And the, eventually the price will be increased, but if you pre-book this car for next season, you can still drive it for 275 euros for two laps, or the more uh, laps you book, the less price per lap becomes. But anyhow, enough about this. I hope you all are all excited. I'm very excited to drive it tomorrow on the track, so make sure to subscribe, like, share, you know, a notification bell for tomorrow's video when we're gonna take it out on the track. But now let's do a quick walk around. I mean, by now, pretty much everyone is, already knows what this car is. Probably the hottest hatch of the last decade. Probably the hottest hatch of the upcoming decade, because I don't know, which manufacturer is going to decide to build a WRC homologation special of 25,000 well, uh, versions of this car, uh, units of this car, I'm sorry, uh, and make it this hot and amazing. So quick details. First of all, let me tell you something about the license plate because a lot of people are going to ask about that. So KL stands for district that the car is registered, MC for Mitchell Consulting, not for Misha Shahruddin, unfortunately and the number so usually we put like something like horsepower related etc or, or etc uh, but in this case it's four wheel drive three cylinder and unlimited fun i hope you like this little detail that we well that we came up with robert and i together but anyhow all wheel drive as mentioned three cylinder 261 horsepower now i've been mentioning it quite often that i believe that manufacturers nowadays put the lowest horsepower number possible that you would still have that particular horsepower amount if you would put car on a dyno on a very bad day with a very bad fuel you would still get that this car feels like something towards 300 and i believe there are already videos with this car on the dyno out there on the internet where the car shows something around that the car keeps on pulling it's just ridiculous and you will see that tomorrow on the track video anyhow three cylinder usually like we have there 218, which has a three cylinder. We have the sub seven up. I think, yeah, it's standing over there. Also three cylinder engines. And then they're stock form without the remap. I was like, oh my God, this is so boring. This is so bad. But this is absolutely different cookie. Anyhow, uh, furthermore, when we move on here, we have the red calipers. So this means that the car is equipped with performance pack. This, uh, so it means red calipers, uh, Torsen, LSD, front and back. Uh, Michelin Pilot Sport for S tires, which is very important, and these very nice wheels. Now, the wheels will be replaced by Protrack wheels. PS4S, very good tire, especially for wet conditions. So we're going to decide if we're going to be running the Air 1s on the dry and probably PS4S on the wet, that we, like we usually run on other cars. Brakes, we're going to have a look, but already they are big, they're responsive. Um, so obviously we are going to change for the beginning just the pads, fluid, lines. Got to see if the lines are braided or still just rubber. Uh, and we will go from there. On the rear as well, very nice brake discs, very nice brakes. Um, on the back, well, the double exhaust, diffuser, and yeah, if you want to find out about the boot space, can we find out about the boot space? Yeah, 
it is pretty okay but this car is not built to be like an everyday car i will get to the to that in a bit so let's jump straight into the interior i'm going to tell you what makes this car so great so first of all it's pretty fun because <laughs> not fun but funny because it does have the rear seats but as you can see here in here it doesn't offer any space now the saying goes that Tommy Mackinnon the head developer of this car I mean we had back in the days Evo 6 Tommy Mackinnon edition but this is already Tommy Mackinnon edition by itself right I guess he wanted to take out the rear seats completely no back seats this means that the roof line could go even lower but Toyota said no we need to keep rear seats I mean they're useless they honestly absolutely useless that's why we're going to take them out and put the cage in there but probably the reason why manufacturers are doing that also in case of Toyota with GT86 or in case of Turbo S with 911 and old Supra where in the new Supra no in the new Supra you don't have the back seats where the back seats are absolutely useless but there it's for sometimes for tax reasons for insurance reasons for the homologation reasons that the the government etc see it as not just a sports car but something like a family car and thereby the cars becomes more affordable this is like some legend that goes on but anyhow they are useless and the car should have been without seats at all that's something what Tommy Mackinnon wanted and uh, there are no back doors because according to WRC you're not allowed to put aerodynamic elements on the back doors this means since here is no back door you can put big arrow on so I'm pretty sure the aftermarket manufacturers or aftermarket tuners etc they will offer some body kits that would resemble the actual WRC car now let's move on to the interior the first impression that I get of this car it's the more I was driving it the more I had the impression that this car was built by someone who loves cars now important thing when we look at the cluster it is so simple it is so you would even say maybe in a way boring but more importantly it's just simple so what it says is that it's not digital like most of the cars it is basically the same that you would have on a car from 10 maybe even 20 years ago just analog and just like a central info display that you have everything here what I'm referring to is that together with the cluster the whole interior it looks pretty simple there's like yeah okay we have some Alcantara here but the pr development costs have been kept low because everything went towards the drivetrain and the way the car handles and no unnecessary bullshit like ambient lighting or you name it you know all these things even the audio in this in this car actually pretty much is one of the worst that I have experienced but I don't care because the reason why it's been done because of that is to keep the price low so in Germany this car starts around 30,000 euros with a performance pack with all the, the differentials etc that I mentioned you add roughly four or four and a half thousand euros so this car with all the dealer costs etc we got for around 35,000 euros now I know a lot of people are going to be pretty jealous and screaming because for example in Netherlands and uh, other countries where taxes on cars are pretty high these cars cost around 55-ish thousand euros which is to be honest still I would pay for that car I mean I would have to pay for that car if I would be living that in, in those countries but it would, would be worth it absolutely and a separate mention of course some countries are even more jealous than the countries where there are extra taxes on this car such as United States and Canada that don't get this car at all I don't know why I mean there are certainly reasons for that because hot hatch market is maybe like yeah not as popular as SUV market of course but oh my god so for all the US and Canadian audience come to Apex rent this car you will be blown away and will be even more sad that you cannot get those cars well maybe you can wait 25 years until you can import those but anyhow let's move on more about the car's details uh, when I posted the first pictures of the car it was taken with like a uh, wide angle uh, shot of the steering wheel so it was slightly distorted so some people commented that the steering wheel looked ugly no it looks amazing it's small the direct the steering is very direct very responsive and it has been built by someone who knows about driving who knows what what features are bothering people when you are driving so for example over here we have immediately a uh, button for the lane assist you can immediately switch it off because it just it's annoying like so quite often it's just beeping that when you switch light lanes without uh, using the indicators of course you should be using indicator but when there's no traffic you just want to go from left to right or take the exit even um, and then it just starts beeping at you so you can just switch it off great um, 
all the other features that you would expect uh, regarding like the audio controls, etc. Now let's move on to the actual uh, drive chain control. So you start the car, nice sound, pretty cool. Gearbox, very direct, very responsive. It just does everything that you need, something that you're used to, especially if you're driven the GT86, there is like no play, it's, it's amazing, it's fabulous. Now, here we have the powertrain control, so stock in the, in, in the normal mode, when you push at it, it well, it's, uh, when you start the car, it's already normal, so it sends 60% of the torque to the front, 40% to the back, when you put it in sport, it sends 70 to the back, 30 to the front, this means it gives it a bit of more yeah, oversteery character and in track mode it is 50-50. Now I probably want to drive sport on track to just like to be a bit more playful but I don't know, we will try out both features what is best and then over here you have also a couple of more, more buttons. This one you know probably what everyone wants to, to, to push it, that's the start-stop system. Uh, then we have here the traction control button and the IMT. Now the IMT is the rev match. So it's by standard, it's off. So when you press it once, it will turn it on. You can see it in the upper left corner of the display. It turns it on and it will help you rev match when you downshift. Now regarding downshift, I must say that the position of the pedals has been very firmly designed because look at this, I hope you can see it. You can, with one feet, you can already not heel and toe but just like with the ball of your foot you can do both braking and well and rev matching this is absolutely amazing well and regarding clutch that's all good all fine so it's so great so basically i will definitely be driving this car without the imt feature and to be honest it was not that quick even i must say so it's it's amazing so whoever developed this car is great and the grip on the pedals is also nice and also you can do left foot braking because there is yeah the position of the pedals this is something that makes the car really like the involvement of the driver this makes it or breaks it so position of the pedals the gear stick and the steering are, are great now speaking of the the traction control button when you are in normal mode, so when you push it and you press the uh, traction control button once, you will see that the TRC, the traction off, goes on. When you put it, for example, to sport mode or even in track mode and you tap it once, it immediately switches off everything. Traction control, stability control and collision avoidance system, which is great. Uh, the same goes for track mode, so we switch it for to track mode and it says like expert track or expert sport. It is good, however, I hmm, the, the issue I have from business perspective is that sometimes you want like to have some sort of a track mode, but still kind of like in between traction control. You know what I mean? That it, it's not completely off, but it lets you go accelerate out of the corners without breaking it down. For example, MDM mode that you have in BMWs. I don't know, maybe th this car is completely differently set up and that it does it already without switching everything off. Uh, but uh, we will see, we will see eventually on the track. But anyhow, the first impressions were absolutely amazing. Now, moreover, since we're already talking about the interior, the seats are actually pretty good um, because of the fabric that is being used that uh, you have pretty uh, good stability still. Uh, I know because of the cornering speeds that the car will be doing, you would definitely want bucket seats because you will end up holding yourself to the steering wheel. Something that I felt that's what they are kind of lacking. Another thing regarding the seats, look at the headroom. It is pretty little. I'm not complaining. I'm 1 meter 85, uh, which is okay. So the, the, the car is great. However, where I'm going to put my helmet? Once I'm be wearing helmet, I'll be already hitting the, the roof. If we're gonna put the cage in here, that's already very close. And you will, if you're gonna put this, the, the bucket seat in there, you have to like lower the position and with the usual, so to say, uh, included rails for the seat, for example, from Recaro, etc., they usually maintain the same seating position. So I think we're gonna run into difficulties there. So just like some extra thought regarding the seating position. So, but so far it's been, uh, it's been good, but uh, in the future it might be a bit difficult. The, the heating uh, <coughs> seats are, are heated, which is good, but <laughs> most importantly, you have the heated steering wheel, especially currently nowadays when it's, can we see the, the, can we see the, 
Yeah, yeah, I know that it's turned off. Can we see the current temperature? Anyhow, now it's around four degrees and in the morning was even minus. So sub-zero temperatures, then as heat the steering wheel is a very welcome feature. Right, enough about rambling. Let's get it on the ramp, see how the suspension looks like, see how the brakes look like, and then put some stickers on. I forgot to mention, the car comes with carbon fiber roof. Okay, good. Funny to think that the Yaris started as a starlet. <laughs> Holly. I'll wait for the car to go first. Yeah, they're a lot bigger than I thought they would be. They're, yeah, significantly bigger. Another thing is that the car comes with a fixed suspension, so no adaptive, no EDC or whatever, whatnot. This means, first of all, again, uh, lower development costs, and it is just set up the way you want it. And probably Toyota or Tommy in this case thought like, you know what, whoever's going to buy it for the track are going to put different suspension on it, so we're not going to be bothered to put something fancy on it. Hmm. What's it look like? It looks like a brake pad. <laughs> I know, but anything similar? Hey, hey. Hmm. That would work. What is it? It's just the same pad as a Cupra or a Megan. Perfect. I think that would work. We'll try. Yeah, so the back of the pad will clear the bell, or the hat, depending on where you are. It's a little bit out, but that's okay, because every longer you hold anyway. This is obviously just for fitting purposes, we're not going to run just one pad. Uh, but while George is doing that, I'm going to have a look underneath the chassis to have a look. What you can see, obviously independent suspension, since it's all-wheel drive, mandatory. <laughs> ah, the brake lines are rubber, so definitely going to be replacing those. What else do we have? The exhaust, mid silencer, and then a big cat on the over here. Now, another thing which could be a downside is the grill is pretty big, so relatively big stone chips or like uh, any track debris, you can go through it and go through your intercooler or radiator or air conditioning and put some damage to the system. So I'm not a fan of this, the whole system of any new car for that matter, but uh, we will see. Hopefully it will be all okay. Actually, I was saying something about the brake cooling, but look at this. Here's a whole duct there and that goes towards the brakes. However, however, so here is the actual, so here is the hole. But I guess it gives you the option of putting the, what's it called, actual hose towards the brake uh, No, this will be more just for, this is how the, most OEM run it. Yeah. Just to bring the cooling into the wheel arch to get the wheel blow, to get the air blowing over the brakes. Imagine. Very simple shocks on the rear. Oh look, tiny pads. No, the M4 pads. M4 pads? No, the same kind of shape. Let's have a look. M4 is taller. M4 pad probably about that tall. Is it taller? I think. Yep. Mm. Much taller. Okay. These will be easy to to get a hold of. Yep. I think so. I don't think they would have built this car with a market in behind it to show how good it is on track and stuff without thinking about pad compounds and pad shapes and stuff. Well, I'd like to hope not anyway. Don't you hate T9 on your phone? What? T9. On your phone, the predictive text. Is this an Android joke? Oh, this is cool. What was that? They put like little protective caps over the nuts so they don't get all corroded and messed up. That's pretty cool. Nice. I, I must say, it's, it looks very much Volkswagen. Does it? Yeah. 
It's a very like Volkswagen take, hmm. which is pretty cool because it works. Yeah, I mean, this is this reminds me of Mark IV instantly. Well, yeah, or Mark Seven to be honest. Yeah, or that. Probably eight as well. Oh, at least the prop's easy to get to. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And the cat and the OPF. We're going to go true rally style and straight pipe it from the cat to the back and then just have cats in the back so they're constantly glowing. Yes, GT2RS style. Everything's nice and easy to get to. I like that. There's, it doesn't look like there's much that needs taken off to get to anything. Like even diff out is like, look how easy the only roll bar is to get to. Mm -hmm. And the links. Just bang, 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 done. Easy. You put big Sherman rods on or what? <laughs> well, it, it's got space there to be for things to be adjusted, adjustable stuff, yeah. arms and stuff to go on. So. Oh, already rested. <laughs> 600 kilometers. It's probably been sitting on the container ship in the ocean for two weeks while it came here. Makes sense. All right, let's take it to Blackfish for some graphics. What's the first impression? Jesus. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's really nice. I was kidding, go drive no, it with I, I mean, like, first you have a first impression as soon as you get in. It's a nice interior. Yeah. This is this, this is all really nice. It's all Alcantara. Yeah, and, and the stick is like very... And, and the pedal position, I love it a lot. You can do basically heel and toe with just one foot without actually... One foot? Yeah, I mean... Will you heel toe with both feet? <laughs> Am I doing it right? <laughs> ah, just I mean, you can do just toe, toe and toe without heel. No, I prefer, I always do it like this. Yeah, okay. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Before bringing the car to Blackfish Graphics, we're gonna make a small pit stop at another shop. Oh, look at that, they have a new sign. They really have a new sign. Sorry. First impression. Incredible. It's good. And for no money. Yeah. Which mode did you have it in? Track. No idea. Track? Yeah, we started normal and then went to track. Cool. Really cool. Just the seat position. Yeah, that's so true. The suspension is good. The brake is good. The power is okay for for stock car. And for this for this amount, no, it's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's nearly half the price from the from the Supra. Mm -hmm. And it's double and it's better. Double the car, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Super. Uh, all the weight out. Cage in. Seat position change. Low. Some suspension. Mm -hmm. I think the brake you can run. Yeah, the brakes. Yeah. Yeah, but you the, will the see pads, in here. I've took the pads out just now. Uh -huh. They're almost identical to the Cupra. Okay. Almost. The holes need uh -huh. to be made bigger. That's yeah, it. No problem. That's easy. But really nice. Yeah, let's see. I never heard about this car. Yeah. <coughs> cool. You don't want to get on that. Huh? You want to keep it now? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not that hot. I get my new car next Sunday. What are you getting now? Yeah, what do you think? Well, <laughs> the right one. The new um, M3? <laughs> <laughs> never. <laughs> not for half the price. <laughs> no, never. Well, I guess if the car makes Tom Shimmer himself raving about it, it must be the ultimate seal of approval. We have arrived at Blackfish Graphics. Um, the car is already inside, so let's go have a look. And uh, yeah, it's going to be the end of the video already. The car is done. I just want to show you one feature that it has here on the dash. Look at that. Avoid excessive acceleration due to temperature. So that's a, that's a nice reminder. Real driver's car. And earlier I was uh, mentioning the interior lightning. It looks it looks very nice. It looks very nice. But anyhow, let's how about show you how it turned out. I mean, you probably already know. Just a regular Apex uh, styling. Yes, turn the lights off. Uh, there it is. Amazing job by Blackfish Graphics.
Well, of course, we still have to replace the, pro, uh, the wheels for Pro Tracks uh, and Nankan tires. By the way, I just found out that one wheel costs 1600 euros. This means four wheels is 6400. So, with a performance pack where you get those wheels, it's worth it alone. It's ridiculous. Also, very nice subtle touch over here. Total juice and Apex, and that's about it. All right, I guess that's it for today's video. I'm very excited, well, of course, to drive the car myself. So for tomorrow's vlog, stay tuned. And also to hear all the opinion of all the people who are coming to drive it this weekend, because this weekend the car is booked out. And also for everyone else who's going to drive it, well, the upcoming year. It's awesome. It's amazing. So make sure to check out tomorrow's video. I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm stoked. So let's go back to Apex. And uh, yeah, well, have a great evening, guys. Where's the start? Oh, here they start. Ooh, I, I love how it's pulsating. That's cool. All the small little details.